In this video, we're going to talk about half-life. Half-life is used throughout nuclear chemistry and in nuclear physics. Um, it's a concept that overlaps into so many fields, so it's very important that we know how to do this. Um, half-life is the time taken for half a sample to decay. So if you recall, um, in nuclear decay, um, it means that we have atoms that are unstable, that are breaking apart. So half-life is the time it takes for half of a group of atoms to decay or change. Seems complicated, but the way I think about it is you can think about like a pizza. So you and your friends have ordered a pizza, and over a period of time, half of the pizza disappears. You guys ate it. And then over another period of time, and since you guys are getting fuller, you start to eat slower, half of the previous pizza disappears. And as more time goes on, half of that disappears, and so on. So these arrows represent our half-life. It's the time it takes for half of what you had before to go away, to disappear. So we're actually going to follow this uh, kind of silly example, but we're going to use this format to actually do some of these problems. So let's try a problem. Let's say we have a sample of chromium 51. Again, 51 is our mass number, uh, like we've talked about in our isotope video. And let's say they tell us the half-life is 28 days. Okay, so one of the questions it can ask, so part one, is if we start with 52 grams, how much will remain after um, 84 days? So we say, well, we start with 80, uh, we start with zero days, so this is our original time. And then after one arrow or one half-life passes, 28 days happens. After another half-life happens, we have 56 days. And after one more half-life, we are at 84. So we count, we have one, two, three half-lives. So we've just followed the same timeline. Um, and we say, well, we had 52 grams originally. After one half-life, that sample gets cut in half. So we have uh, 26 grams, half of 52. And we do this again. This is for the second half-life. We have 13 grams. And then our third and final half-life is going to give us 6.5 grams. So this is our answer. 6.5 grams will remain after 84 days. Another problem using chromium-51 with a half-life of 28 days is what if they give us a question kind of in reverse? What if we end with 6 grams after 28 days? How much did we have originally? So for this particular problem, we do the same thing in a sense, except we work backwards. So we know that we're, we're Oops. So we're using the same problem. I need to make an adjustment to this. Um, how much did we start with if we ended with 6 grams after 84 days? So it's the same uh, number up here. And then we say, well, we have to work backwards because now they gave us what we have at the end. So at the end of three half-lives, we have 6 grams. So if we go back in time, when you say one half-life before that, we double. So we have 12 grams. The second half-life before that, we have double that, so we have 24 grams. And then we, what you started with originally, or our first half-life, um, we do one more. So we have 24 times 2 gives us 48 grams. So we started with 84 grams. After three half-lives, or 84 days, we end up with 6 grams. 
All right, so let's try another problem that asks us to identify um, something different. So the question is, how long will it take for us uh, for a 1,000 gram sample with a half-life of two years to decay to 62 grams. And this question seems really complicated, but we follow the same format. So originally, we started with 1,000 grams. So we're looking to see 1,000 decaying to 62. So we say after one half-life, we end up with 500 grams. Another half-life, we end up with 250. Another half-life, we end up with 125. And we're just constantly halving um, the amount that we had. And then one more half-life, we have 62.5 grams. And on the MCAT, they're not going to ask you for a very specific decimal answer. So we get to 62.5, we can say, all right, so that's around 62. So we have one, two, three, four half-lives. If each half-life is two years, four half-lives times two years will give us eight years. It'll take eight years for all of this to happen. It'll take eight years for 1,000 grams um, with a half-life of two years to decay to 62 grams. Let's try one last example. So if we have a 160 gram uh, sample of a radioactive element decays to 10 grams in 50 minutes. What is a half-life? So now we're looking for half-life. We just follow the same exact problem-solving method. We started with 160 grams. We go to 80 after one half-life. We go to 40 after a second half-life. We go to 20 after a third. And then we go to 10 after a fourth. So we count one, two, three, four half-lives. If it took 50 minutes total for all of this to happen, then we would have 50 minutes divided by four half-lives, because we have four of them. So each half-life would be 12.5 minutes. Okay. So in closing, just remember to do this process of these arrows. And each arrow represents a half-life. Um, if necessary, you can work backwards. It's kind of like constructing a timeline for half-lives. Um, as you start to do these problems, you might work them faster and faster. And you can start counting these arrows off on your hand to save time when you're problem solving for the MCAT. So be sure to do a few problems to make sure that you can get these points. And in the next lesson, we'll talk more about radioactivity.